We're going to go over today um, the recent changes from Autodesk, um, the Autodesk account, um, a live demo, and just in time. So uh, Autodesk is, is transitioning to a simplified named user model. What that means is basically plans will now be based on people and not serial numbers anymore. They announced early last year that they're not uh, retiring uh, multi-user subscriptions and also uh, maintenance plans and anything based on a serial number. So by the, the 6th of August 2023, um, all of the anything that is not a named user subscription will be retired. Basically, instead of managing network servers and serial numbers, we only need to manage users now. There's no risk of, I guess, losing serial numbers with uh, people losing, like, leaving companies. We see it quite regularly where someone tries to activate a, a previous serial number that they've left the company. And so, yeah, we don't have to worry about that anymore, which is great. So I'm just going to jump out of this for now and let's go through the Autodesk account. So obviously with things being based on serial numbers, we need to manage users. A lot of you guys will be familiar with this portal for downloading software and everything like that, but you may not have managed the users previously. So when you log into the account, it should look something like this. Um, so this is the home page at the top and it tells you if there's been any recent product updates if you've got any support cases open with autodesk as well um, if you've recently purchased any subscriptions there will be another section here as well that has the recently purchased subscriptions and then if there's anything ever changes with the autodesk account it will always pop up in here as well so um, if you're not sure how to do anything there's always a short video here it just runs you through it very quickly as well um, and a few resources on the the right hand side if you ever need to change your profile settings up the top here where your little initials icon will be you can drop that down and you can go into the profiles and settings and you can change a, all of your name address contact details all that kind of stuff communication preferences um, and you can also turn on the two-factor authentication turn it off if you don't want it anymore. First section we're going to go through is just the products and services. We'll go through everything in these as we go through today. So um, if we go to all products and services, in here is where you can manage downloads of your software. You can see what you have access to. Software is there um, to be able to assign to different users. One second. Great, here we go. So in here um, we can see all the products um, you've got access to. Um, it tells you what they are, whether they're single user, uh, multi user. If you've still got multi user subscriptions, obviously soon everything will be single user. If it just says included, um, it means it's accessible usually online um, and all that kind of stuff. If you've got a collection, um, instead of saying view downloads here, it's going to say view items. Um, we hit view items and it brings up all of the different software inside that collection as well, like so, um, and all of the different services that come along with it as well. I'm just going back to the original screen for now as well. Um, you can filter through, if you've got a lot of products and um, you struggle to find things, you can filter through things by license type, you can filter through by version, what versions they have access to, what platforms they can go and also what languages that they have. So when we go into here, let's say we want to download AutoCAD for example, um, we just hit view downloads and it brings up this download screen uh, so you choose what version you want to download. 2022 is now out for some of the products. It's not for everything yet. I think it's just AutoCAD, 3ds Max and Navisworks and a couple of other things. And you can obviously choose your platform whether you're on 32 or 64 bit and your language as well. Um, you'll notice that there's different types of download methods here. So underneath here where it says view all, you can drop that down. Um, recommend to use either download now or browser download. Um, if you use install now, um, there's a lot of issues where it corrupts if it doesn't download and install in the same sitting, which does happen quite regularly. If, if your internet connection drops out, it corrupts a download file. So it's usually a lot better to, to use the download now method so that it uh, doesn't happen again. Go across to activation here. This basically just shows you the method of activation for all the versions that you have access to. Um, so in your Autodesk account, you have access to the current version and three versions back for most products. Um, and then on request, you can also get access to another two versions um, if you need to at any point. Uh, obviously, it's recommended to stay current as possible, but we understand that some projects tend to run from 
over a long time and, and certain software needs to be run at the correct version for the files to, to be compatible. So um, there is options to, to access a couple of other versions if you need to. Um, and last part in here is you can access updates and add-ons. And so any updates for the software um, pop up in here that you can download and, and apply through um, here as well. Um, obviously when you install the software, you'll get access to the desktop app as well, which is usually the better place to, to manage add-ons and, and downloads if you need to. Um, with that download method as well, by default, it usually is the install now method. Download now method is not, not really ideal. So yeah, I, uh, sorry, the install now. So I'd always try and use the download now if possible. If you use the browser download, one thing to note is that it usually comes in separate files. So the first one will start downloading, but usually a pop-up blocker will stop <clears throat> the rest of them and you'll see if I attempt to download this, it will uh, pop up with the first one. And then you'll see usually, uh, it doesn't need it for this one apparently, it's done it all in one. But usually you'll see it pop up with a little icon up here where you have to allow the other pop-ups um, and then it will download the rest of them. So that's the, the products and services there. A new part of the Autodesk account that's come in recently is the custom install here. So this eventually will be where you create deployments for everything. It's only available for certain products through here at the moment. Um, some of them are still created with the install file once you've downloaded it. Um, but for certain products, you'll do them in here now. So you basically select your license type um, of what it is. So if you're looking at single user subscriptions, there'll be Autodesk ID. Um, if they're maintenance and older um, things, there'll be serial numbers. And then obviously if they're multi-user, it'll be a network license. Um, so let's say I do Autodesk ID, for example, it gives me all the products I can create them from. I select AutoCAD and then ask me to select the version um, and you can put in customizations and all this kind of stuff as well and some extensions. So um, basically it's a nice easy way to, to create deployments now um, it, and then it basically will just give you the, the deployment package when you hit to download it. Um, the next part in here is just active trials. So if any of your users are using trials of products um, and looking at a, a different software, exploring the software, you'll be able to see that in here as an admin um, to tell you which user is using it whether how long it's got left, whether it's expired um, and all that kind of stuff. Um, so it's a really good way for, for you guys as, as admins to be able to check in on, on what the staff are using, whether there's any additional software they need or anything like that um, going forward. So it's quite a cool function there. Um, next part we'll go through is just user management. So this is where obviously important stuff happens now with single user subscription. So there's two sections to it, by user and by product. So in by user, this is where um, you, can, you can do all of this in either one, but it's where we add users mostly. You'll be able to see a list of all of your users in here uh, once it loads. Cool, so you can see a list of all of your different users in here. Um, you can see what their role is. Um, see, obviously, if they're just a user, all they'll have access to is product downloads, and, if, and they were, uh, I think they have reporting as well. They won't have user management and billing orders. If they're a primary admin, they have complete rights to everything. Um, as a secondary admin, you have pretty much all of the rights, except you can't uh, delete a, a primary admin. So the other part to this is Teams as well. So this is a fairly new thing. Um, if you, it's it's usually for the smaller to medium businesses, it doesn't tend to be too useful we found to, to have things separated into different teams as you're getting into large organizations where you've got different departments and different people managing certain licenses and certain um, sort of parts of the organization it's good to be able to separate things into teams so that um, they can all sit under obviously one management portal but the different admins can can manage their own licenses um, Sometimes what you'll find as well, um, when you purchase new subscriptions, depending on how they're processed, they sometimes just get put, put into a new team automatically. So if you're ever not sure, you can't find a new subscription, the first thing to check is whether a new team has been created. And usually if you switch between those teams, you'll find that new subscription in there. And then we can get them merged back into one after as well. <clears throat> so if you have more than one team in here, you can create users for different teams and obviously they'll only appear in those teams and the subscriptions assigned to that team will only appear in there as well. 
Um, obviously, we only have one team for today. But if you need to add users up here, we just hit um, invite users. You can either invite a single user by just putting their first name, last name, and email address, or you can invite multiple by typing them as the example is below. And the other option is importing them. So if you have a CSV file uh, where you've just got a list of all of your users that you need to import if you're adding a lot, so you just put their first name, last name, and email and upload the CSV file and it will import them that way as well. Cool thing as well, users that already exist in your team will be ignored. So if you just have a, an Excel file, a, a sort of a database of all of your staff and users that you need to add in, you can periodically update it just by uploading it and it will uh, just exclude any that are already in there. Similarly as well, obviously we will need to delete users at some point, let's say someone's left the company, um, for example. To delete a user, we just go into their user and just wait for it to load. Um, uh, we can also change their role in here, so if you want to make them a secondary admin, you can do that. Um, we can even make them a guest user as well. But yeah, if you need to delete a user, let's say they've left the company, we just hit the bin up here and delete. And that user will be gone from our, our portal here. Cool, so you see Michael's no longer in here. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much the by user section in here. Uh, you can also assign subscriptions through here. So let's say if I go into my own account here and I need to assign myself a collection, I can do that in here, just hit assign and it will now assign that to me. Uh, I'll get an email saying that my product access has changed and I can obviously log in and download all of that. Um, and same thing, if you need to unassign it, you can do the same through here as well. Um, and the other part is by product. So in here, you'll see basically what subscriptions you have. Um, so if you've got obviously multiple different things in here, you'll be able to see that. Um, we've only got the collections here that we can look at because that's the only thing I'm assigned as a secondary admin for. So if I click into here, you obviously see there's one of two available, it said before we did that. Um, you click in here, you can see what users are assigned to that particular software. And obviously you can unassign and assign users through here. So let's say I want to assign myself. If I just start typing Alex in here, it should drop down with a list of all of the users and then it obviously goes down into there. And I can assign that. And again, obviously if we need to unassign, we can do that here. Let's say you've got a lot of users. If you've got 50 or 100 different users uh, in the same subscription, you just search in here. Say I need to find um, Zanzara, for example, she's the only one in there, but what we do is start typing her name in here and it will obviously find her in the list. One thing to note that's um, probably a little bit different to how it was previously, when things were based on serial numbers, um, specific serial numbers were assigned to each different sort of piece of software. Now it's, it's changed, it's now a subscription ID that gets assigned. And let's say I have, I purchase an AutoCAD today and then three months time I purchase another AutoCAD. They'll be on different subscription IDs, but in here they'll appear as one. It'll just basically go into a pool of seats. So um, it's no longer really an issue of uh, finding out, let's say we come to renewal and we realize we don't need as many as what we've got. Um, in the past, you'd have to track down which user was using the particular serial number um, to obviously let that particular one lapse, for example. Um, now we just, it, when we come to renewal, if we've got too many seats, uh, we can just drop one down. It doesn't make a difference which one it is. There's no specific subscription assigned to a specific person. It's just a pool of seats. As long as there's a seat available, you can assign a seat to a user. Uh, and if you let one lapse, that, that subscription ID isn't, there's no relation. So yeah, it's, it's become a lot easier to manage in that sense. So that's basically the user management there. There's not really much more to that. It's quite a simple process once you get used to it, if anyone isn't um, in any. So uh, the next part is just billing orders. So this part here will just basically show us what we have, the different contracts we have and all that kind of stuff. I can see in here, um, obviously contract numbers, um, what team it's assigned to, how many seats that it's got, it's term length and when it expires as well. Uh, Sometimes this is a little bit behind, this has been renewed and it's not updating in here for some reason, but you go into the next page and it should have. So if we go into here, and it's not gonna load again, great. Apologies, just one sec, okay. 
Cool. So once you go into here, um, you can see what the contract manager is for that particular contract. Um, usually the contract manager is you guys as admins or whoever deals with renewals and the primary administration of the licenses. Um, the, it tells you what's included in there, um, what's it, what its activation method is. So in past you would see serial number or serial key or network and now you for most subscriptions you should, should see sign in for any any single user subscription as long as it's not on a maintenance or like a, a perpetual license with maintenance or a network so anything that is a single user subscription should now say sign in uh, there was a process where Autodesk migrated everything over um, over the last probably year and a half uh, but it has now been completed so you shouldn't see any single user subscriptions that are assigned by sign in um, by serial number anymore sorry so that should everything should pretty much say that now. Obviously, you can see your start date and expiry date and everything like that. So that's the billing and orders page. Next part is just the reporting tool. So this is a new section is insights here. Um, I wish I could show you more of this, but we don't currently have any insights in here. Um, but basically, what it's doing is um, uh, the big part of this move to the to the single user to named user model was uh, giving, I guess um businesses and, and admins be able to to make smarter decisions based on the usage data so this insights tab it analyzes the usage data of your subscriptions and everything like that but it can make recommendations to you based on that usage data whether it's um, adopting more products or um, reducing subscriptions that aren't being used or anything like that so you've got two sections you've got team insights or my insights um, so the team insights will obviously be your whole team here. You can select the different teams if you've got more than one, um, or you can go to all teams. And, and yeah, there's a little bit more to, to learn in here if you want to have a look in there. I wish I could show you more, but there's no insights available currently because it hasn't been enough time where this has been available for us to get any. You can see your seat usage in here. So basically you can see who's actually using them um, and everything like that. Also cloud services. So Cloud services usage is in here. It tells you what cloud credits you have. Sorry, obviously we've got no cloud credits here ourselves, but um, these are used for things like um, there's parts of things like Fusion 360 where you use cloud credits for gener generative design and all that kind of stuff. So basically, you purchase cloud credits. People can use them every time you do a task in the, in a cloud service. It uses some of those cloud credits and, and yeah, they're just basically, you come in here to purchase more, I think you can purchase them in different batches, whether it's a hundred, a thousand or whatever it is. You get a certain amount that come with each subscription as well. Um, I think you get, I think you get a hundred or something like that usually. Um, I can't remember exactly off the top of my head, uh, but yeah, so you can do that or you can also have cloud services usage by user in here. So currently we've got no users consuming cloud credits, but it will tell you which of your users are using them. So obviously you could ask them what they're using them for. Uh, you'll get insights based on all that kind of stuff as well as to what you might need and, and all that. So. So that there is the Autodesk account in a nutshell. Just before I switch back, the last little part in here that I missed on the home page, you'll see it on every page, is the notifications thing. Um, so if anything changes, um, something gets added, something's due for renewal um, or anything like that, you should get notifications pop up here as well. Um, it'll tell you this subscription expires in however many days or um, anything like that. So if you're ever not sure, it's a good place to look to find things. And if you ever need help, you can hit the little help in here uh, and follow these little guides and you'll get to either um, a chat or something like that or a, a place to submit a case. So that is the Autodesk account there. I'm just gonna switch back to the PowerPoint. Um, just give me one sec. Cool, so if anyone has any questions, um, feel free to unmute yourself. Um, you can ask any questions you have or just drop them in the chat box. If you don't have a microphone, but we'll hang around for a few minutes um, to answer any questions that you guys have. Does anyone have any questions at all? Um, for anyone who missed any part of this or if you came in late, there will be a recording uh, once we've processed it and everything like that. I will send out a link to everyone who attended and registered. So if anyone that's in your organisation that missed it as well, feel free to share around if, if you have other people you want to, to show how to manage this kind of stuff.
Alrighty guys, it looks like we're all good. So if anyone else has any questions, obviously um, feel free to reach out to me anytime. Give me a call or shoot me an email, alex at advancedspatial.com.au. But yeah, thanks for joining everyone and um, feel free to reach out anytime if you need any assistance with this stuff. Thanks guys.